Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Earning Their Stripes. My name is Danny Martinez, alongside Ian Smith and the amazing Ethan Badowski. But fellows, we're not alone today. Also joining us is a man that undoubtedly has more style and swagger than all three of us combined. He also <laughs> happens to be a top prospect in the Marlins farm system and really in all of baseball, and is currently lighting the world on absolute fire with his bat. Monte Harrison. Monte, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you guys doing? Good, good, good. It's an honor. It's a pleasure to have you on here. Really, we're we're excited about this. I'll tell you what. I know Ethan for certain is excited <laughs> about this. <laughs> yeah, I'm but, definitely uh, excited to be on. Just to know, um, you guys were uh, highly referred. So, um, I mean, during the <laughs> season, not no offense against guys. But, you know, I mean, you guys got jobs to do and stuff like that. But um, uh, I try not to do too many interviews. But uh, I was definitely uh, excited about this one. Appreciate that's that, awesome man. to hear that, man. Absolutely, absolutely. So we won't waste any time, all right? We have a, a serious, hard-hitting question, all right, leading off. Yeah. Who has the better hops, you or your brother Shaquille? Sorry, my brother's not even close. He knows that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I'd like to hear. Um, I swear he'll tell you, too. Actually, he, <laughs> might, he, might, he might be like, yeah, you're too deep in the baseball, so you can't jump now. But I <laughs> What's Ooh, that vertical look? That battle. What's that vertical look like at its peak, Monte? Uh, and I, oh man, I don't know. It was probably like last time I re- it was recorded it was a forty-two. I, but after after I got done, uh, like basketball or whatever, I mean, it kind of it kind of went down a little bit. So I, I don't nearly jump. I wouldn't say nearly jump as high, but not a forty-two. Well, yeah, I mean, well, some may know you were a multi-sport athlete in high school, playing football, basketball, and baseball. How mm-hmm. close were you to pursuing something something outside of baseball? Uh, I, honestly, the the funny thing about it, I mean, uh, growing up all my life, all we really played was, uh, I mean, we played all the sports, but mainly it's so easy for, like, inner-city kids to, to, to really play football and, and basketball. So, mm. um, I mean... It, Everywhere you go, you see a basketball or football in the middle of the street or in the yard, so it was very easy to get to. So growing up, I, th- I thought I would be the basketball player, and actually I, everyone thought that my brother was going to be the baseball player. And um, it, the, the role is kind of reversed as we got older and started playing a little bit more and kind of finding ourselves. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I had aspirations of playing sports. I mean, any sport, honestly, uh, until I got to, like, I would say my junior year of high school, and that's when I really decided to play uh, football and baseball. What do you think was a better moment for you in high school, being a perfect game All-American or winning the state title in football? Uh, Winning the state title. I mean, honestly, I mean, the group of guys um, that that we had was was amazing, man, just to know that we had that bond throughout all of high school. So we got to experience a lot. We weren't weren't used to losing. it's actually really sad because a kid that I played with and actually I hung out with all the time recently just died. RP to him, the Dewan Simmons man, and um, it's, a, it's just a, a, a crazy man. I mean, it's it's okay, man. It's a, you know it's a part of life. I mean, the way it happened, it, it, I thought it was stupid and pointless, but uh, God's timing is is uh, is undefeated. You know, once He makes that call, and it's time for you to go home. It's time for you to go home. But uh, I just want to give my condolences to his family and. Missing all those guys back home, man, for sure. Yeah, we send the best out to you, Monte. I'm really, we was really sorry to hear about that, man. Oh, good, man. Anyway, Monte, you you come over in this trade, this Yelich trade. It was the big headline trade last off season, and uh, you instantly become a fan favorite. And I think that has a lot to do with the way you play the game and the swag that you play the game with. Uh, where does that energy, where does that passion, where does that swagger that you bring to the field every day, where does that come from, and how do you channel that out on the baseball field, man? <laughs> um, honestly, man, I think ever since I was young, um, mm-hmm. no matter what sport I played, I wanted to look the flyest. <laughs> I wanted to be the best on the field, and I wanted – I don't know, because every, every, in, in every aspect, I was – when I was young, you guys might, might actually might not believe this. I was actually the smallest kid out of everybody, period, until I got to like a sophomore in high school or something like that. The smallest out of everybody. And so people would very like make fun of me or like, you know, and say like the short jokes or like uh-huh. uh, little, little Monte or they would call me little Shaq just because of my, I was a little brother of my, of my brother. And um, I think once it got to the point where, 
um, I was kind of I, I hit a point, and my coach, my coach told me, Danny Hughes told me, he said, "Yo, you're you're not you're not a guy that's going to stand out. You're not going to pop eyes just from mm-hmm. stepping on the field. You know what I mean? You know that that eye test, and so you got to make yourself well known somehow, some way." So he so he told me to start wearing like stuff that that would make <laughs> me stand out. So I would wear like pink socks, pink arm sleeves, like this stuff to be like, what what is this little kid doing? Like he think like he looks stupid. Until I got on the field and I start playing, I'm like, wow, They're like this is a this is something special. He's little, but he's got heart. And ever since then, I mean, it's always been something I've always done. So um, I just stuck with it, and honestly, it's just part of my DNA. So you said you were the little guy, man. Did that? When did you like shoot up? You know, when did you start getting bigger? Because I mean, now you're one of the biggest guys on the field, and you know, you yeah. just have that imposing force. So is that just hard work, or did you just like spring up one summer, man? Honestly, uh, both. Um, hmm. My freshman year, I, I went into my freshman year at, at I think it was five seven, <laughs> and over the course of the year, and I came back at the sophomore beginning of my year, and I was six two. And, that's, that's just, I, I always would hang out with my older brother, and um, uh-huh. you know those dudes are all taller than me. So like, I mean, they're seniors, soft, I mean juniors and seniors in, in high school. So you know they're they're starting to hit that that prime time uh, puberty, mm-hmm. and uh, those dudes are like six foot. So they're, I was I just got really tired of hearing the little little <laughs> this little that. Like, oh, you're so little, you can't you can't hang with us. Huh? So I would literally go to my coach and be like, man, like, how do I, <laughs> how do I get taller? How do I get stronger? He was like, you got to lift weights. Like, yeah. if you want to get bigger, faster, stronger, you got to lift weights. So I was really dedicated to, I was in the weight room literally two or three times a day, every mm-hmm. single day thinking about that. And it wasn't just me. I had a couple other boys. My brother wouldn't do it. That's why he's so skinny. Um, <laughs> Um, but, but other than that, I mean, it's literally just, I just stayed in the weight room and just yeah. ran, worked out. Like I would literally work out for like an hour and a half, two hours per session. And then that, 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 that's after freshman year, summer, this, the height hit me out of nowhere, man. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, man. I mean, I had growing pains. Like it was no other. I mean, like sometimes I couldn't even walk. It was, it was hard to deal with sometimes. Speaking of hard work, man, you had a really interesting all season where you kind of went through the process of work, reworking your swing. Uh, yeah. And and during the fall, you know, you got, you got those strikeouts down, uh, but the power kind of wasn't showing, and then that kind of continued in the spring. But now mm-hmm. all of a sudden in New Orleans this year, man, I mean, you're slugging 581. So, you mm-hmm. know, wh- what was that process like over this, you know, over this all season and then – were you ever worried about that power coming back? And when did it kind of click back? And, you know, I mean, the results are jumping off the page right now, brother. Um, honestly, I mean, when we talked in the, before the fall league, all they talked about was just they didn't necessarily say, um, you need to cut down on strikeouts. You need, you know, repeating that over and over. And that, that wasn't an emphasis because I, I don't feel like personally that, that's, the, that's the goal. You know what I mean? I mean, it is the goal, but. That's not the way you approach it. Um, but they did a very good job of explaining it. it. was like, well, we feel like these numbers, your numbers are, are, are crazy when your ball's put into play, um, mm-hmm. you know, the BA, BIP or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the way they explained that, it was just my hard work contact. And they did more of talking about the good instead of like, oh, like we got all this bad. Because, I mean, honestly, let's be honest, we only had just the strikeouts. Everything else, I mean, it, it plays, but just talking the swing and, and, and being on playing, I, that's the thing I really realized about myself. I'm not a, I'm not a launch angle guy. You know, they talk about that mm-hmm. old type of swing and, and swinging up on the ball. For me personally, I have to swing down on the ball. Um, mm-hmm. I literally think to hit the top of the ball and then staying through it, my, my approach to right center field or, or take care of the rest. I mean, the where you contact the ball, is that's, that's where your launch angle is made. There was this really interesting stat that came out last week, I believe, which blew my mind. Okay, and I'm not sure if you've seen this yet. All right. You're I mean, we all know how hard you're hitting the ball, but this will put it really into perspective for you. So you have hit 44 percent of your of the balls that you've barreled up have left with an exit velocity of over 105. Okay, the MLB average is eight percent. 
Eight yeah, percent of balls hit out over 105. You're hitting 44 percent of your hits coming yeah. out like that. So that has to be a testament to the changes that you made and just that strength. I think during they 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 kind of brought that stat out last year, and um, I can't remember what the stat was. It was like 25 percent or something, and the MLB was average was like seven. And um, I think for me personally, that's 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 the main goal. I mean, trying to score up the balls as much as possible. That's that's the really been the goal this year. And, the more times I do that, I think the more times it'll be in my favor because I don't think very many people want to be in front of a ball that's 105 uh, and higher. You know what I mean? I know I wouldn't want to be. Yeah, exactly. Sure. So um, if you hit it the right way, good things are going to happen. And I think this year I, I talked to Duncan, you know, Gary, all those guys that are that uh, helped me in hitting uh, over this offseason and stuff like that and just talked to them about it doesn't matter where the balls hit on the ground. Or in the air. I mean, I just want to be hit as hard as possible because over time that's going to play. And um, I mean, this year it's, it's been kind of wild. I mean, every single ball that most of the balls I put into play have been hit really hard. I mean, I don't think about the hits or anything like that. I just think about trying to catch four or five barrels every single day. Whether I do that or not, I mean, you know that that comes and goes. But if I can catch those and have a consistent, good quality AB, I mean, it's going to play in my favor over time, over the course of the season. No doubt about that, man, at all. Well, a big thing in the game right now is the unwritten rules, or so to speak. Tim Anderson had his epic bat flip last week and into yeah. the suspension's clearing and all that. And he's decided to come out this week and just start a debate saying today's players should start setting their own unwritten rules. Where mm-hmm. do you stand on that subject, on the bat flips and and so forth? Uh, Yeah, man, I mean, you know, that's, that's definitely uh... – it's a part of the game, I feel like now. I mean, celebrations are more part of the game. I think people like that type of excitement. I mean, um, that's it. we're entertainers at the end of the day, so we have to entertain, but we have to also have to do it in a in a respectful way. I feel if a guy strikes a guy out, he can he can celebrate. Now there's a fine line of celebrating and going too far, and that's the same way with bat flipping and, and doing all that stuff too. But, I mean, there, there should be a fine line. You should be able to do it, and, and nobody really gets hurt by it. I mean... It is what it is at the end of the day. I mean, but at, as a power guy, Monte, I mean, there's got to be some times where you hit one that just feels so good that you just have to get rid of that thing, right? I mean, like, there are just those moments where just it just happens naturally, or is it is it always something that you think about as it's happening? Um, No, no, no. I think one of those things is where, I mean, guys just talk about it all the time, and, and you know, they, they, want, they want that moment. But me personally, I'm I'm not into the whole – necessary bat flipping you know throwing the bat mm-hmm. part i mean i I'll, I'll watch it for a little bit but me personally yeah. i'll just honestly i'll just set the bat down more of a kind of more respectful like oh yeah i know i got it but um yeah i'm not i'm not gonna throw the bat or anything like that that's not that's not me personally unless it's actually I, i'll take that back. i had one last year i kind of did yeah. a little bit but it was just my formal team the brewer so um i told him uh uh, I would I would do it if if they let me hit a home run and it happened to be a walk off and I feel kind of bad for them for doing it. Yeah, I was, I I was gonna say, really man. It. I was gonna say I saw a video of you really get one out there, man. But it was a walk off, which is just a whole different feeling, right? That's gotta be something that just feels like on top of the world, right? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But uh, those those all those dudes that 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 uh, over on the Brewer side and that was in Biloxi and stuff like that. Um, they they know it's no disrespect at all in, in any type of way. Of uh, it's actually funny because the dude that I hit it off of, I'm actually really good friends with, and uh-huh. um, we we've had conversations about it. And he actually came up to me and was just like, "Man, I hate the moment that you did it in, but I loved it. Like this, was, <laughs> he was like, I was happy for you. I'm not happy for my ERA, but um, he said it, 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 if it was going to be anybody, he's not, he's happy it was me." And I think you hit it right on the money. I mean, there's a there's a fine line. Like from a fan's perspective, we do want entertainment. Of course we do. And quite yeah. frankly, I'm sure as heck not going to even be able to hit a 70 mile per hour fastball. So if someone gets to it at 95, they deserve to be excited about what they just did. Um, and, yeah. and, and it's nice to hear that perspective from you as sure. well. Um, yeah. So we have we have about five, seven more minutes with you. And I have one that I want to I want to get your perspective on. All right. Yeah. You have accomplished a lot in your career. But some mm-hmm. might jokingly or seriously say that you're actually your best accomplishment is you took the Miami Inc. Madness Championship. I'm not sure if you even know what I'm referencing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. offseason. Absolutely. So much so that you even got like 
an exclusive buy. You didn't even have to, you know, go through the first round, the second round. Like they just knew Monte was going to be there at the end. Uh, you obviously have really nice work done on you. I, I wonder if there's any particular piece that you really hold most dearly or that has the most significance for you that you're willing to share. Um, honestly, probably my chest. Um, I have. Uh, they didn't really show that in the pictures just because I'm limited them on on what um, to show. Um, but yeah, definitely my it's it's right over my heart. I mean, my grandma. I mean, that's one of those things where I got it when I was 14, but then um, she passed away in 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 15 in 2015 um, in my first full season in May. So um, I got it touched up and and redone, added some stuff. So. I think it's one of those things where um, that that's definitely one of the most memorable, just because she's gone, and I can always um, I can always count on her personally and, and, and ink wise to, to be on me. I know, guys, if you ever see me uh, like a national anthem or something like that, I'll I'll hit my chest and just 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 to think about her. But um, other than that, I mean, that's that's the more you know somebody has that type of. Everybody, not everybody, but most people have that type of memory. But other than that, I think I, I would say that my back is probably one of my, uh, it's probably my favorite other than that one. Got you. Ah, oh, thank you for sharing that, man. Yeah. Yeah. You. So you talked about how you, you know, you hit your chest during the anthem and everything, man. You got any other rituals that you go with? Like what's on the pregame playlist? What are some other things that you do yourself ready to go uh, on a night to night basis? Um. Honestly, like before the game, I mean, if we're in the clubhouse, I'll usually put stuff on the club in the clubhouse, um, mm. rap, whatever, you know, just mix it up. Slow you the game. clubhouse DJ? Sometimes, I mean, uh, Dean and, and and Yachty like to take over sometimes just because they got seniority, you know. But um, uh-huh. other than that, they kind of let me do my thing. But once it hits within like an hour of the game, I, I personally I put those headphones on and try to lock in and. Mm-hmm. And that's when I go to the, the calm spirits and, and try to find the, the good the good music, the, the good side of me, and I, and I listen to the gospel music. No pressure, but Will Stewart gave us a really good answer to this question last time when we asked him. We wrapped it up with this. <laughs> I, need a re- I need a really good minor league story about, like, the worst place you played in or just a bad minor league experience because I live for these type of stories, man. Because okay. the minor league life is so interesting to me. So you got anything really good that that uh, from any time playing either down here when you were in the Milwaukee system and any just like crappy places you played in or anything? Uh, yeah, Helena, Montana. That's that's that's. I mean, I I mean, I like doing stuff like I like going to hunting, camping, you know, uh-huh. fishing stuff like that. But Helena, Montana was a whole different world, man. I felt <laughs> like I was. It was just not something I was very used to. I mean, a, 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 I wouldn't say a small town. Well, it is a small town, but like it just mm-hmm. wasn't used to what 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 I'm normal to. And it just, mm-hmm. I would literally go to the field from like I would literally show up at the field like 11:30 every day, and I'll just be like, I'm gonna sit at the field because I got nothing else <laughs> to do. And then I wouldn't leave the field till 11:30 at night. So um, it was just one of those. I was just like, man, I I need to get out of this place. That's probably why I did so well. There. <laughs> trying to get trying to get yourself up as quickly as possible exactly. up and out of there <laughs> yeah really appreciate you monte that was awesome man yeah man no problem at all this has been great man and appreciate good luck you. the rest of the way keep barreling the ball up man i'm really excited i hope we see you up here soon man you're, you're one of my favorite guys in the system and i'd love to see you in miami come september or something man because the results you're putting together right now are awesome they got us all really excited man all right, thank you guys. I mean, I'm really excited. I mean, just to know that um, what Derek and those guys are doing, it's it, it's it's going to be something special. I know the, the it isn't really showing it right now, but I mean, we're not the only team to go through something like like this over the past year. So, um, you know, all the fans, I tell them just to stick with us. I know we got guys that's working hard, and uh, we got some stars coming up through the system. Even dudes that are in the big leagues that uh, we're going to put this together and we're going to win championships. 100% with us. 